testing the microphone. Perfect. Good morning, Doreen. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Ryan. How are you doing? Good well, thanks. All in red. Right. <laughs> Valentine's Day. That's oh, so yeah, funny. There you go. <laughs> I, said to, I said to Rob, I think this might be the only, like one of the only red shirts I own. I was like, I hope I, this doesn't get dirty today. I need to wear it for Valentine's Day tomorrow too. <laughs> Congrats We're supporting the gym. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, Linda. Good morning. How is everybody? I knew you'd have red on. <laughs> yeah. Our red color. Mm -hmm. And it's Valentine's Day tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Doreen, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Chowko? Chowko? Chacho. Chacho? All right, thank you. You're welcome. I never would have guessed that. Yeah. I know me neither. Some people go Chachio, but usually it's just Chacho. I've been saying it all the I kept my looking life. at that and I'm going, I know it's Italian, but how do yes. I pronounce it? Yes. <laughs> all right. That was everybody's weekend so far. Great. Yeah. Some of yes, the weekends always gets uh, to be busy. Even if we think it's going to be like a quiet day, end up rushing around. But yep. Sundays are usually catch up for us around here. So I already got my crock pot going. So it's going to be oh, yeah. a awesome. veggie chili week for me. <laughs> nice. Anybody have any fun Super Bowl plans? Just hanging out with friends, watching the game. I'm not really a big football fan, but <laughs> yeah. About the commercials for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are, we are, we aren't either. We don't actually have cable, so we have to try and figure out a way to get the game on TV. I was like, we at least need to watch part of it so that we are clued in. Yep. I'm a big football fan. We'll all kind of we'll we'll all watch. My mother in law's here. My girls are excited for the puppy bowl. Oh, yeah. What time okay. is that on? Two o'clock on Discovery okay. Channel. Discovery Channel or Am Animal Planet? I don't know. We have it set to record because we're supposed to go ice skating early this afternoon. Are you guys going to Simsbury Farms? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Robin Fitz will be there. Good morning. Morning, Good morning. morning. Another Halloween mug. Uh, yeah, probably the same. Yep. This one's the Bony Boxer. Nice. <laughs> I have a 13 year old. I have a 13 year old boxer. Oh my goodness. 13. And wow. Inside the rim, there's like little paw prints and bats. So cute. So, so yeah, at, at 13, that's literally a picture of him. <laughs> there's so a neighbor that lives in the townhome condos near me has two beautiful boxers. Um, what are their names? Carter and Reagan. His other two were Nixon and Kennedy. That's oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I love well, one, presidential names for dogs. Yeah. One's a Republican and one's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got They're a Lincoln. Beautiful. They're beautiful. Morning, guys. How you Morning. doing, Leo? Good. How's everybody doing? Good. We might as well give it a more minute and see if anybody's rolling in, and then Ryan, you can take it away. Sounds good. Real, where's your red? <laughs> what? I can't. You're going in and out, Ryan. What'd you say? So where where's your red? It's in my heart, Ryan. 
Oh, I should, <laughs> should have known. No, I was looking for it and I was like, this mm, kind of smells. I'm going to wear something. <laughs> <laughs> Laundry day is today, guys. <laughs> Yeah, you, you might hear our washer in the background, so I'll apologize for that now. My dryer, too. <laughs> hey, Alexis. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Yourself? Good. Good. Hey, Britt. Hey. 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 How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Hi, James. Good. Big James and Adrian connecting to audio. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. We might as well get started. If people hop on, awesome. If not, they can watch the recording. Fantastic. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, officially concluded week two. Unbelievable. Um, How did everyone do with connecting with their positive influences? Got a, got a thumbs up. Anyone else? Anyone want to share any learnings from connecting with their, their influences? Well, for those of you that know Karen Randall, I think she belongs to the gym. <laughs> I selected her as one of my coaches um, when I can't have Linda. And uh, she's been amazing, except she's watching everything I'm eating. But um, I mean, it really helps to have someone on the same page and that's knowledgeable about what you need to put in your body. Um, so what I don't, you know, at work, it helps a lot at work, especially when the, the food's out. So that's been very helpful. A coworker. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Such a great point. You know, we spend a lot of our times at work <laughs> or a Absolutely. lot of our time at work. So to have a coworker who's just aware of your goals can be so helpful. Mm -hmm. Anyone else like to share? So I know you got something. Susan, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, I already, like, so my sister-in-law, they, she's good because when I go there and I tell her, like, I'm not eating pasta, right, for lunch. Like, I can't eat that. Like, that's not mm. my plate method. So she's really good about saying, oh, they always have food. I mean, my brother's house is my second home. So um, it's nice to just be able to go somewhere and know that there's not, she doesn't tempt me with the chips, like my brother who walks around, you know, snacking on the, he's gone now. So I won't have to worry about it today. Um, cause chips is my downfall. I don't even buy them anymore. I'm just trying not even to have them in the house. Um, so that's good. And then I have a friend that I call. So if I'm like starting to feel like I need to snack on stuff that I don't need to snack on, even if it's healthy stuff, but it's extra, just extra calories. So I gave her a call this week and she's always very encouraging and supportive. And, um, so yeah, so it was good. And also getting on the app helps a, right, a lot yeah. too, right? Our, our silent partner, like, it's like, oh, let me just show something good I'm doing. So it makes you a little proud of yourself that you're doing the right thing. Yeah, that's, love the app. Yeah, that's sure. great to hear. You guys have been fantastic at engaging on there, posting photos and comments that the support has been great and really encourage you guys to continue to do that over the next four weeks. Um, and uh, kudos to you, Susan, for understanding or finding that trigger and, and just keeping it out of sight, not even in the house. That's great. Anyone else want to share? Miguel, big, big uh, six pounds loss already, killing it. Eight pounds. Yeah, eight, eight pounds now. Eight pounds. Wow. Short side him. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll come short. They're, they're hard. They're hard to run. <laughs> Yeah, the same thing for me. Like I, I, I um, I've taken all the triggers out of the house, right? So I don't, I no longer, I don't have any bread in the house, which is like, like almost like something I've never done, right? So, um, I'm not drinking anything. Ex you know, all I drink is water now. Um, I had a very bad habit where I was drinking soda almost every day for lunch, right? With so, um, you know, and I'm not doing anything crazy. I went from seven days a week and. One day a week, I treat myself, right? So I'll go out to a restaurant one day a week and, and for that one meal, right? So I'm not doing like a cheap day. I'm doing like a cheap meal. So, you know, I, I go out to a restaurant and I, you know, have myself a Roman Coke or something like that. So that'll be my 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 once a week, you know, drink, right? And then, you know, I cap myself. So last time we went, you know, we had one, right? So 
Um, so that's been helping a lot in that the video on the on the um, the app, right? The, the one for this week, you know, the hidden the hidden uh, you know sugar in, in soda, right? When you see a cup like that much filled with that much sugar, and you're like, um, no wonder, right? No uh -huh. wonder, you know, I, I can run ten miles and not lose any weight because I'm consuming, you know. Uh, you know, three cups worth of sugar a week, right? In just yeah. the one staple, one thing, the one item, right? So, yes, yeah, so it's been very supportive, and just to know that, and the same thing too. The fact that I know that I I posted on there eight prevents me from then di digressing because that's usually what happens. I make I, I take you know one step forward and I'll take ten backwards because I'm like oh I'm, I you know I did something good, right? But the fact that I posted it, I know I got to keep going, right? Because I can't. Say I lost eight pounds and then go gain ten more, you know, like I usually do. <laughs> yeah, so. All in you too, Miguel. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That, that's fantastic. Great, great awareness. Uh, great build of of healthy habits. One thing I would add there, and I'm sure Linda Brielle and, and Denise would agree here. You know, I heard it with the pasta. Heard it with you know the cheat cheat meal. Right. We really want to avoid those can't have or cheat type terms, right? We really want to look at it as, hey, I'm allowing myself a treat, right? And it's okay to treat myself once in a while, as long as I can get right back on track with that next meal, that next workout. You know, the pasta, you can still use the plate method if you, you're craving pasta and use that as your starchy carb, you know, just moderate the, the portion rather than cutting it out completely. So you're not putting it on a pedestal and going, oh my God, I have to have that, right? Yeah, I love Miguel, Miguel that you said you go out and you enjoy your meal and you enjoy the drink that you want to have and then you move on. And that's the important piece, you move on. We don't belabor it afterwards. We don't feel guilty or feel bad because it takes the good out of the entire experience, right? So um, the... We want to make these modifications for life and indulging here and there is part of it. So the important part is to enjoy it, move on and continue to fuel yourself with the things that make you feel good. Yeah, we're all about building a healthier lifestyle versus a strict regimented plan, right? And so that's done through our simple healthy habits. Um, any other questions or challenges that maybe have popped up? Silence. We're just killing it. No, I mean, no the challenges. Challenge is, is, yeah, the, the, the challenge is, is modifying the behavior. It's starting to get a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, well, it's easier for me because I don't have kids in the house right now. My kids are all in college, right? So I don't have to have all those trigger foods, right? But the other day, like, I guarantee you, if there was chocolate chips in the house, I would have eaten them. And I probably wouldn't have eaten one, right? So, so you know, I know the challenges to start off with just kind of maybe getting rid of those those kind of trigger foods, understanding what they are, and then slowly, you know, um, you know, kind of just understanding that this is kind of you know part of a lifestyle change, right? I don't need to eat a whole bag of chips at a sitting, right? So it so um, you know, and, and it and here's the the one thing too that that I'm now like. When you feel good, you really don't take it for what, what it's worth, right? But when you sit there and, and, and then you have like this horrible meal, you know you really feel horrible, right? Like it's difficult to quantify the good, but it's easy to quantify like when I don't feel good. So, so you know, I'm just trying to just, you know, take it in, you know, one day at a time and realize that I'm starting to feel better. You know, uh, not, I'm not talking about mentally, just physically, I feel better, you know? I'm in my late 40s, you know, my digestive system is is just happier the fact that I'm eating balanced meals and all this other stuff. So yeah, so um I think it's a challenge, but I think it's getting easier by the day. So that's awesome stuff. Yeah, I you know love I love that you point out that it can be hard sometimes to quantify how good you feel, but it's very easy to be like, oh, I didn't feel so good after I had that. Um, and it, it, that's such a great thing to pay attention to, you know, that connection between what we put in our bodies and how we feel afterwards. Um, and as you continue to, you know, develop an awareness about what you're eating and 
just bring some more mindfulness to what's on your plate, pay attention to that. You know, how does your energy after you eat? What does your stomach feel like? How are you feeling the rest of the day? And it's it can be so interesting to really kind of tune in to, to what certain foods do to our bodies. One other thing too, not I'm I'm sorry I'm 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 talking so much now, but one thing <laughs> I did I did notice too, right? I, I usually would have a really hard time sleeping or falling asleep. And and um and I, I think I've gotten realize it was just the amount of sugar I was consuming, you know, and it, it wasn't just like the, the sometimes the soda, it's just that all the sugar in the food was just amping me up so much that I was having a lot of difficulty sleeping. It, it, it's not uncommon for me to go to bed at midnight because I just can't seem to shut off my brain and I got to get up at 5.30 in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I realized is that I started to not cut because I'm not really hungry, right? I'm eating, I'm eating normal, you know? Um, but it's all that lack of sugar. When it's time to go to bed, I'm ready to go to bed. And that's another thing I've noticed recently too, as well, is that I'm actually going to sleep earlier. And it's not like I didn't want to go to sleep earlier before. It's just I couldn't, I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't stop my brain and my activity. I would feel amped up all the time too, as well. Mm -hmm. Such a, an, a, an awesome thing to point out. And for those of us with children, I really encourage you to think about this in terms of their nutrition and then our expectations of their behavior, right? Um, sometimes you think like, oh, these kids are crazy. What are we allowing them to put into their bodies? What are they drinking throughout the day? Or do they have a steady stream of sugar going in all day long? And then we're mad, time taking forever. So we want to think about what we're fueling their bodies with as well. Yeah, I notice a huge difference in my energy since I've been eating the, you know, really sticking to the plate method in my healthy afternoon snack, because I used to have like the afternoon slump when I was working and I don't get that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and this week I had a little bit of IBS from, it's always tomatoes. I should know better when, if I eat ripe tomatoes, like I can eat unripe tomatoes, but Brie, thank you. She was like, normally I would cut out a lot of roughage when it starts to kick up because I didn't want to irritate it more but I really stuck to my I just kind of cooked them a little bit more and stuck to it and you know felt better by Friday so I was able to go to the gym and do that crazy workout Friday night <laughs> and, and give it my all so um yeah so it, you definitely feel I definitely feel better um and sleep better when I'm eating when I'm eating well Awesome. Fantastic. Any other questions? Anything else we can help with today? I think it's so surprising that people eat a certain amount of calories throughout their day and they're keeping their hormones happy. We realize that we don't hit those slumps because remember, if you're somebody who skips breakfast or end up skipping a snack, you are changing your insulin levels. Right? So that totally affects your energy throughout the day or even your hydration. If you change one thing, like Miguel, right? You cut out soda for the most part and that changed everything. That was just one thing. Um, and that's the important piece is that it's just the small changes. Um, and also listening to your body because you are physiologically different than everybody else. Like Stu, right? What works for you is different for somebody else. So you have to listen to what works for you. Thanks, Brielle. Yeah. All right. I think we should pick a winner for this week. And I've called in a very special guest who's <laughs> about this apologies if you saw her a little early she's been waiting patiently this so patient. Is wow. youngest daughter camille so <laughs> this week's prize is a recovery and mobility session from body fit down in canton so they're a physical therapy athlete recovery service company that does assisted mobility personal training <clears throat> to help recover quickly and improve performance. So whether that's from working out or post-injury, post-surgery, they do it without medication, injections, or surgery. So uh, we got to randomize this, huh? No? We have our, our fire helmet here. There we go. Everybody's names are in. Camille, you do the honors. One piece of paper. Thank you. Who do we have? Cody Carlson. Ooh, awesome. Not on the line, but I'm sure would love some assisted mobility. 
Yeah. That prize pack is a 25 minute assisted stretch, stretch, assisted stretch session and 25 minute review of mobility exercises to keep up with that, which I know he's going to love. I want it. I need it. So congrats, Cody. Yeah, and one thing, um, two things I want to add on to that is uh, Cindy Langer, who is a longtime member of Resolute Fit, is the owner of Body Fit Physical Therapy, um, and she was kind enough to hop in as a sponsor for our challenge. Um, and the good news is, Cody, when you're listening, you will not have to check the can. Uh, Cindy is actually also going to be having hours at Resolute Fit, offering these services to our athletes. So um, it's really great if you're someone who just like feels tight or you feel like you're not recovering well. Um, because she'll tell you exactly what you need to kind of achieve the results that you're looking for in terms of um, recovery and mobility. So it's a really cool service that she provides. Awesome. Good so, job. <laughs> on to this week's habit. It's going to be drinking 60 to 80 ounces of water a day. So if we get a, a raise of hands to see who's maybe already there, who thinks this might be a challenge, and we could give you some tips. Susan, you're there or you think it's going to be a challenge? No, that's, I'm not a, I've never been a, um, like a soda or a juice drinker. That's something I have a cup of coffee in the morning and then all I drink is water through the day. So hopefully I, I usually hit it. I usually don't have a problem hitting it. So. Nice. So you're going to kill it. That's great. I am. <laughs> for those that might struggle, a couple tips for you. One, keep a water bottle with you, right? A fairly sizable one. My, my preferred is this 28, 26 ounce Yeti. It's always at my desk. So then you know, hey, I've, I've downed two, three, four of those. I'm in pretty good shape, right? You can start doing the math. Um, drink through a straw. Sometimes you, you tend to drink a little bit faster sipping through a so straw. And you'll be amazed at how it goes down. You know, if you're not one that really particularly loves water, add a little flavor, right? So a cucumber or maybe a squeeze of lemon or lime just to give it a little zest uh, or add some carbonation. Look at, you know, no sodium club soda seltzer, give it a little, little bubbly so it kind of hits those taste buds, but still has that same hydration effects. Um, Linda, Brielle, Denise, anything to add there? Um, no, I was going to say, I, I, we often get the question, you know, does seltzer count? Um, and it, it does. as long as there's no sugar or sodium in there, you can count your seltzer toward your water goal. One thing I would just caution against, um, there are some people who feel really full when they drink seltzer, so they end up skipping meals and snacks. And then there are other people who feel like that carbonation makes them more hungry. So pay attention to those things um, and just keep that in mind. Denise, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do not want to count the water we're consuming during our workout, correct? I was, yeah, another question we get a lot. I always tell people not to count it because we're sweating. So when we're sweating, we want to add even more fluid in. So I kind of count, I don't include that in water intake just because it's replacing what we're losing essentially during the workout. So, go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. I just want I'd like to add that I've talked with clients about is people that have desk jobs or they're so busy that they're not even paying attention to drinking the water is to set an alarm like on your computer or your phone to go off like every hour just to remind yourself like hey I gotta you know get some water in and you know drink an eight ounce glass of water or to have a glass of water like right as you're sitting down to eat so that you know you're getting at least an eight ounce glass with that meal that you're having or that snack so it just kind of helps you get that water total in. Mm -hmm. There's also great. apps too that will remind you. So I was going to say, um, alarms are great too. Either one that helps. Or look at the clock. At the top of every hour, you have to sip some water. We've talked yeah. about um, habit stacking, how this the easiest way to create a new habit is to tack it on to something we're already doing. Um, so a really easy way to start increasing your water intake, keep a full bottle of water either at your bedside or in your the bathroom that you use. And right after you brush your teeth in the morning, drink some water and to get in, you know, 20 ounces, start your day off on the right foot with some good hydration. So hydration, the reason for this habit is hydration is key, right? It helps with a lot of bodily functions, keeps us moving correctly, helps with our energy levels, uh, especially our performance in the gym, right? Dehydration can actually reduce our performance by about 20%. 
which is pretty significant. Um, so really trying to stay hydrated so that we have a healthier version of ourselves. And I think what you'll find is once you tackle this habit, uh, you'll kind of go, how was I not drinking this much before? Because you'll start feeling parched and going, man, I need some water. The straws really help guys. It makes it a lot more fun, not gonna lie. <laughs> W, you're always drinking out of a straw, right? No, not always. Oh, yeah, your water bottle has a straw. One other thing that sometimes people notice when they start increasing their water intake is the big thing is I'm, I'm peeing all night long. And that's terrible. We don't want you up all night long running to the bathroom. So if you find that's a challenge for you, I would encourage you to kind of front load your day with water. Um, so, you know, if we're aiming for 60 to 80 ounces, aim to get the majority of that in before like three, four o'clock and don't be chugging it right before bed because that's of course gonna be a recipe to be up all night. That being said, if this is a big increase for you, you're going to be peeing more, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Your body does adjust, okay? It gets used to the increased fluid that you're taking in and it's not gonna last forever. Any questions? Who's everyone picking for the Super Bowl later on? I got the Bengals. Go with Joe Burrow. Hmm. I'm out of line. I don't know who's in it. I'm not I, know. I, 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 picked, I picked the winner. How about that? <laughs> you picked the winner? You're right. So you're so Whoever scores more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to see. I'm not really interested if uh, the Patriots are there. Not going to lie. <laughs> Same here. Does anybody have the Super Bowl recipes that they're trying? <laughs> we, we don't really care, so we're not doing anything special. No. Well, all right. Well, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for your time this morning. Keep up the awesome work. Remember now you're going to have an additional habit to check off each day. So be sure to take those just a couple seconds to go ahead and do that each night. You'll have a fresh set of videos popping up tomorrow. So be sure to check those out. And if you didn't do your progress photos yet this weekend, I would encourage you to take a set of those tomorrow. We're approaching that halfway point. So you've got your midway check-ins coming up. If you don't have one scheduled, please reach out to your coach. Um, because we are almost halfway through, which is pretty crazy. Crazy. You guys are crushing crazy. it. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Right. Have a great week. All right. Take care. Take care Bye. 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 Oh, Miguel, one thing. Yes. On? Yes. Your uh, Rush Bowl gift cards, they're at the front desk, okay? They somehow fell behind something, and I spotted them when I was at the gym. So stop at the front desk when you go into class. Uh, tomorrow, I guess, okay. or whenever you get in there, and there will be an envelope with your name on it, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, Bye. take care. Bye.